Hi, my loves. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that this video finds you well. I hope that it reaches you with perfect timing. I know so many of you guys are tuning in every week to get these weekly messages, these weekly forecasts, and these um, intuitive message shares that I've been pulling, and I am so grateful for you, and I'm so happy for that. I've really had a lot of... Um, lightning bolt revelations coming through to me lately and something that I'm so grateful for is that my tribe, the Bahati Vibe tribe, you guys have been with me by my side throughout this entire process and you know that I've been evolving. I have been evolving so much. I have been shifting so much in such a small amount of time and I have not been doing this alone. You guys have been with me by my side and some of you guys a little closer to me than others, meaning like you've been reaching out, you've been making yourself known in your comments and sharing your stories and sharing your testimonials and things that you've been going through and I can't tell you how much that means to me because as I'm pulling these cards and as I'm pulling these messages and I'm sharing them with you, they also apply to my, my own life, my own space and things that I'm going through and reading your journey and reading your stories and the things that you're going through, it really helps me. It makes me feel like we're all in this together. This truly is a tribe. And I can also see how some of you guys are really connecting with each other. And we have this group, we have this family unit. So I'm just really in a space right now of like emotional gratitude and I want to say thank you so much. One other thing too is that I bumped into some of you guys yesterday so we're going to be linking up later on in New Orleans. We're going to be doing a walking tour together and I'm so grateful for that. But um, yeah, it just goes to show like how interconnected we all are and how things kind of come into alignment and how one we all are. We're not separate from anyone. So it's just again this revelation that's been coming through and that's one thing that I want to talk about with this week is this lightning bolt revelation and I don't know if this is just my personal experience that is bleeding into the messages that are coming through maybe this is something that I need to hear but I wanted to share it with you guys because I was gonna do our weekly forecast ahead um, video regardless but it, this is really resonating with me and I want to share this message that being said, I really feel like I am steering away from astrology just for this moment right now. And I'm steering away from tarot just for this moment right now, just to focus on working with angels and working with our guides. Not to say that when I'm working with the astrology chart that, that isn't also there or with the tarot, but I just feel really... I, I pulled the chart up and I said, it was like, spirit was just like, no, Jess, focus on this message, at least for this week. And that is enough. And that is what people need to hear. And that is what you need to hear. So I am not going to fight that. I'm going to flow with it. So I wanted to let you guys know that that was, you know, so that you're prepared, so that you know what to expect. And yeah, so the first thing that I want to talk about, and the first thing that was coming through was this emphasis on time. And that is something that has always made me very emotional. Oh wait, before we get started, I do wanna say, I know so many of you take notes, and I want you to be able to take notes, but I really want you to sit for a moment and listen to this message first before you take notes. And I, I too, I journal. I've been doing a lot of journaling. That's been my saving grace for a long time. But for this time being, at least for the first time that you watch this video, I just want us all to be present. And I want us to be able to connect with this message. And then, then afterwards, if you feel called to, come back, listen to it a second time, and then you can take notes as far as what this week will bring. But for right now, let's just be in a space present right now, just me and you and Franklin. Franklin's on my lap. And let's just absorb this message and see what comes through. And then we can take from it as far as resources and stuff like that. But let's just receive, okay? So... The first thing that I want to say and the first thing that came through is the word time. And that has some, been something that has always provoked emotion in me. I would always get anxious as a child when I would sit with myself and feel like I had this overwhelming, looming feeling of we don't have enough time. We're running out of time. There's not enough time here. Like, And I always wanted to grasp and I wanted to connect with my, my family specifically, to connect with my dad, to connect with my mom, to connect with my aunt, my baby cousin. 
and with my friends but I always wanted to go back to my family my family was everything to me and it was like there was not enough time for me like I could always just sit there and that in those moments they they felt so good for me they felt so fulfilling and even after I left I'm like I just can't wait even if I was going into my room after spending time with my family watching a movie or watching TV together or cooking a meal or whatever I just couldn't wait to go to bed and to wake up so that I could spend more time with my family and one thing that still makes me emotional today and I, I'm still trying to understand why is why time makes me emotional why it makes me feel like we're running out of time we're running out of time and that's something that came through for this message for this week is our focus on time and it's not that time is running out we understand and spirit wants us to know that time is precious you know time is all that we have and it's it's passing but knowing that we can't rush it we can't slow it down we have to stay present and with that everything that you are doing in this moment in this moment in the next moment this time that we're spending together you and I and you take taking the time out of your day to listen to recharge your batteries to connect with me to connect with spirit so that you can have more guidance and more clarity and more direction as you move as you choose like with how you choose to spend the rest of your days moving forward for the rest of this week all of that boils down to time and there is this emphasis that I'm feeling and as I'm saying this now it feels very powerful it feels very like I'm being hugged by the universe I feel like I'm being hugged and guided at the same time it's like this blanket of energy comes around me is like pushing me this way and pushing me in this direction and it is partly because it is my time now it is a part of this journey it's a part of this cycle but we have to stay present in this moment we have to stay present in the current status quo like or not the current status quo but what it is that we have here regardless of what it looks like regardless of what it feels like we just have to sit with it we have to observe spirit is saying so clearly to us that it's not that we are running out of time we are right where we need to be there is this connection to creation and it's it's like we're caught in a web or we've been caught in a web and if you're part of the Bahati Vibe Tribe and if you've been following my videos and listening to me you've been hearing me talk about this void space this void space that is dark and infinite and almost like being suspended and time is neither moving nor is it standing still it's just this like weird time lapse and in, and a lot of you guys after I said that and I've been saying that for the last two weeks almost and this is like the third week that it's happened and of course the power of number three but you know I've been saying like it's like we're in this void space and you guys are resonating with it and it makes sense and it clicks it is connected back to this spider web that we are caught it feels like we're caught but it's the universe in a lot of ways being like stop you know time is not moving on without you life is not moving on without you your life is exactly how it should be right now there is a major lesson, a major life lesson that you are called to learn right now. And I will dive into that, I promise you. But there is a major life lesson that you need to learn, that you need to experience. And your time, it's not that we don't want you to see it as life is moving forward or this train is moving on without you. And you're missing these opportunities and you're missing the, the next job opportunity, the next big the next big thing that your next love of your life your time is running out it's not that's not at all what is happening what is happening is that there will always be in this cycle of our lives there will always be a moment where we have to be present we have to be still and in that stillness we have to be steady it's very human to get to have fear and to get shook and to have anxiousness or depression in that void space where you're wondering am I coming am I going am I missing am I being fulfilled right now how do I fulfill myself what are the next steps what is the next thing that is that I do it's like being caught in this web and every intention every thought every moment every person that you pass every decision that you make it creates this web and this big spider web and this is all of these things that you've created over time and whatever it is that you create whether it's something that's making you happy or something that you thought you wanted but it might have been an illusion 
whatever it is, it's there to serve a purpose to teach you. And that is why the universe, God, our angels, our guides, our ancestors call us into that web, in the center of that web to be stuck, to be stucketh <laughs> and to be still and to see what it is that we have created, that we have co-created with the universe, with the divine at right now at that moment. And when you are stuck in that, it's not a punishment. There is no judgment. There is no judgment of you that is happening. So the, if the universe and the divine is not judging you, then don't, by all means, don't judge yourself. You're meant to be caught and stuck or still. But the word that is coming through is you're meant to be steady. And in that grounding, in that centering, and you being in the center of this web, you are going to see all that you have created. This is an opportunity for you to see how you've been using your time, this time that is so precious, this time that is so limit, limitless, but also limited at the same time, this infinite you know, message that we've been experiencing time and time again. It's like how everything is so connected and this infinite web, you know? But you're meant to be still and steady and to examine how you have been spending your time up until this point and if there isn't a looming, the word is looming, if there's a looming dread, a looming doubt, a looming desperation, a looming need, a looming desire, then there is a revelation that needs to occur, like a lightning bolt. Like I said in the start of this video, it comes in like a lightning bolt that provides awareness to you. And it's in that moment that you will decide in that quiet, being suspended it almost reminds me of like a suspension tank I don't know if you guys have ever done that before but I have and pretty much what it is it's you sit in this tank the saltwater tank and you float and there's a timer that is set there so maybe you'll be in there for an hour and 30 minutes maybe two hours but there's no sound it's supposed to cut you off from all sound all you know smells but I mean I could smell the salt water you just kind of suspending there and just floating and it's like being in the womb so you're just kind of floating there and that's essentially what I'm seeing in this void space that for so many of you guys you've been in or one area of your life has been in. It just seems like it's not really going anywhere. Like time just stops ticking and it's, it's not a punishment. It's not that you've done anything wrong. It's just you're at the end of that cycle. So you're meant to sit there. You're meant to be steady within that and you're meant to be still and instead of doing, instead of pretending and instead of acting and pretending like you know or calling out and maybe even you might be calling out to the universe and feeling like you're not hearing anything or maybe you call out to the divine or call out to the, the divine within yourself and it's like an echo and it's because you're not meant to do anything but be still and to hear and that's the end of that cycle for you so without even pulling the wheel of fortune card which I do have the tarot cards here without even pulling the wheel of fortune card that is the energy that it is that i'm seeing within the tarot is this wheel of fortune this this hermetic mode this number nine and then we're moving into the ten we're moving into creation we're moving into this birthing but before we are birthed before we are given the the clock kind of resets itself and you're on this new journey you need to be still and have that revelation that bolt of is there this, again, the word that's coming through is looming. Is there this looming despair that I've been experiencing, this looming depression, this looming desire, this looming needing, this whatever this is. If that is there, then I need to observe it and see it and to examine myself in the abyss. And that's the thing within, the, within, the, within darkness is that when you sit within darkness, you don't hear anything. Everything is canceled out distractions, you feel lonely, you feel isolated because spirit wants you to be still and be in that almost like a sacred tent where you are isolated from the others and you are healing. Some of you guys are feel like you're bleeding out. Some of you guys are sweating it out. Some of you guys are crying it out. But it's very much um, or calling it out or laughing it out, you know? But there's this sweat, this uh, sweating process, this pur purification process that's happening as you're separate from the others and separate from expectations, separate from your from your working, you know, this, this constantly churning and moving forward. In this space, right, so the lesson that, I, that I'm seeing for us is that without realizing it, it's almost like we've called in things that are not authentic to us or things that don't serve us and the universe wants us to see it see that the divine wants us to see that and say 
look, when you are in that silent and in that darkness, we are going to give you a light, a tiny light. And that light is not there to show you the way out. It's there to provide a reflection. When this light shows up, we want you to look at it. We want you to examine it. It's just enough light so you can see your own reflection, to see the truth of your being, to see the truth of how you've been feeling. You are not called to run away from it. You're called to be present with it, to examine it, to see it, to observe it, and to learn from it. And from that, from what you see, from what you're feeling, you are going to have a revelation. You're gonna see and feel that there's this aspect of within yourself that still needs to be healed. You don't approach that with judgment, you approach it with love and compassion. You're going to see that, okay, this job that I've been doing or how I've been spending my time is not a part of my purpose. And despite my fear, I am going to make a step, a change to move in this direction. You are going to see that there is a void and that void within your life needs to be filled, not with meaningless things, but purposeful things. The one thing that you, or the, the few things, one or a few things that you've been focused on, that you've had your eyes set on, is not <clears throat> ultimately what the universe wants for you, what divine wants for you, or even what you would want for yourself. It may seem that way, because to you, this vision is the perfect thing, but that perfect thing that you see for yourself, or that perfect thing, that perfect person, that perfect relationship, that perfect job, it was only a desire based upon a limited perception, if that makes any sense. So when you sit with yourself, you will see that if you actually were to move into this next cycle with that thing, your odds of being happy and fulfilled would actually be slim to none. And by observing that, you would see that there is a space within that that kind of needs to be released along with an aspect of yourself that needs to be released so that your perception can change, so that you can evolve, so that you can co-create something bigger for yourself. And that is gonna be the biggest revelation. Because again, for so many of us, we've been seeing, okay, this is what I want. I know this is what I want. This is who I am. But when you are stuck in this void space, in this spider web, and you're steady in it, and this light shows just enough to reflect the image with, of yourself and the image of your desires, and you sit with that, you'll see, okay, I thought this is what I wanted, but this was only a precursor. This was only a example. This was a, a, um, um, a mirror almost of what it was that I do truly want. And because of that, I need to learn to loosen my grasp of this and to call in those aspects of what it was that I desired, that I saw that I desired, but also I need to reroute a little bit and call in these aspects but also with this to complete the bigger picture do you see how much of a blessing that is so instead of wasting your time you are you're using your time more constructively more productively now the next lesson that it is i'm learning and that that we're learning but i am learning is what we want for ourselves is so different it's almost like we're outsiders we have to do things by ourselves, for ourselves. It's very Aquarius energy. It's very much striking out. It's very much um, being propelled by a, a bigger force. It's very much Aquarius and Pisces is how I'm, how I'm seeing it, where it's just like this movement that is bigger than your body. <laughs> and basically what I'm seeing is this blooming that is happening in this space of total sensitivity, total vulnerability. And that is what you will you are relentless with. What is the thing, the one thing that you will not give up on? Sometimes Okay, let me take a step back. What is the one thing that you simply will not give up on? For me, it's the idea of family and having family and having health within the, within the family and love. And I am also co-creating the family of my future. But who is the best partner to do that with? This image that I may have originally thought for this person or this thing or the way that I wanted my life to look like or how I wanted to live, it may change. But what I haven't given up on is the idea of family. So it's this idea of what I thought I wanted is shifting and it's clicking into place by my lessons, by these things that I've experienced. And that is the revelation. 
And in order for me to be authentic and to honor what God has for me and what the divine has for me, I have to be honest with myself and to let go sometimes when I, when I, when what I thought I desired is not truly what it is that I want or what I thought I desired has aspects of what it is that I truly desire. And I have to learn from that experience, let go of it, but call it out somewhere else. That will trigger a lot of feelings of abandonment, a lot of feelings of lack, and a lot of feelings of frustration, disappointment, feeling disillusioned, but it's not. What it did, what, how you should look at it, and how the universe is calling you to look at it, and how divine is calling you to look at it, is see it as a lesson, and that is why it was placed in, into your life, was to show you that Yes, you called this in because we are getting closer to this dream thing, this vision of, of you discovering what God has for you. What is it that you will not let go of? That is there for a reason. You won't let go of it for a reason. This dream, this desire of your heart. But in, that, in saying that, knowing that, let go of the things as you discover more about yourself it's not all or nothing and that you want to be flexible with how much you're learning in order to manifest what is perfect and divine for you and that is what a, a, an aspect of how you're going to be spending your time here on earth and it's not punishment it's not judgment now the other thing that I'm seeing is a blooming lotus and it's every opportunity opens the lotus up just a little bit and while you're being opened, it's very vulnerable, of course, how could it not be? So it can be painful and sometimes it can be painless, you know, because that's just how everything is. So I'm seeing this blooming lotus that is continuing to, to open and continuing to learn how to thrive with these experiences and you're learning a lot about yourself and your progress and what is that you want and your path and your purpose. So the message of the lotus, that's what I want to sit with because the lotus is symbolic of moving from the darkest moments of your life, the muckiest moments of your life and somehow not allowing that to bleed into the essence of the purity of your being, to not bleed into your faith. And somehow the murky muckiness of it is a part of the magic. It's a part of the miracle. I feel as though divine is divine and the divine within you is divine because somehow, some way, miraculously, something blooms despite the odds, despite it looking like something could ever come from this, something beautiful can ever be born from it. That is what makes God, God. That is what makes divine so divine. That is what makes you so miraculous and so much of a miracle because it's like, how? How could this happen? And just like looking at everything, how could this thing that I won't give up on, how can it bloom? How can it ex exist? How can I experience this? How can it come to me? if it wasn't a miracle. And that is divine, like it, it divine and the universe and the internal you, that miracle within yourself, it has every desire to prove itself to you so that you believe in it. And knowing that, that is what I'm seeing is that in this darkness, it's really almost making me emotional. And I speak, I'm saying this with conviction because I feel this, like I feel this in my gut. I feel this in my sacral, I feel this in my heart. And I feel it in my crown chakra. I feel it so, so true. And I, and it's, it is real. Like, I don't know how to, how else to describe it. But somehow in this dark muckiness, you are called to not give up on faith. And it is okay if your, your faith gets a little rocky and questionable because it happens to the best of us. But you are called to be in this space where, you know, right now, this light that you are seeing this this um, little glimmering this little glint is going to not pull you out of the darkness but it's your you're definitely being birthed new and with that for some of you guys it might be a little longer depending on your chart but depending on your natal chart because timing is different for every single one of us but it's starting it's starting we're on the third week 
and this is the third week of being born. I don't need the charts right now. In fact, I was called not to look at the chart. I was called not to look at the chart for clarification and for confirmation, probably because it might not be written in the stars in that way. It might be written to something bigger than that. Do you know what I mean? So it's not that we need to look for it because if we were to look for confirmation, if we were to look for the fact to support us, we would doubt it, we would second guess it, and we need to rely on faith alone. But just like the lotus comes from the darkness and just like it comes from the muckiness and it doesn't even make sense for it to be that beautiful and floating so untouched on the surface of this swamp water. And just like you are, have been in this darkened space and it's not even, it doesn't even make sense for you to arrive as, as the whole unique pure version of you, the sacred version of you. Or it doesn't even make sense for you to come go through all that you've gone through and to still receive love and to be able to give love in the way that you do and the way that you will. It's like it doesn't even make sense. Like it doesn't even make sense, but that is the part of the miracle, and that is what you are going to receive. And it all becomes from this comes from this moment of this revelation. It all comes from this moment of being suspended. The hanged man that we kept <laughs> that we kept seeing just being stuck in this limbo just swinging back and forth swinging back and forth waiting waiting wait till you wait till I tell, uh, share with you guys the vision that I had the other day for myself while I was doing tarot all right my loves so that's the message that was pretty long but you guys know I'm not going to um, take shortcuts I'm not going to give you less than what it is I think that you deserve and that is also why I wanted you to take time and to not write notes and to not take notes even though I very much recommend taking notes and journaling. I do it myself. But I have cards here pulled for you and they are coming directly from the oracle and they, they resonate and they support what it was that I just said and that message that I, that I just shared with you guys. Now you can take notes. Now you can pull out your journal.